Hi class, welcome in uh, week four. Today we will be having a few announcements before we start uh, the chapter four. So basically what we, um, well, first of all, I thank you for your participation. It was wonderful in Padlet and I've enjoyed reading it. And I hope you, every week we do this, the same thing. And I will make an announcement and you go there and you do your uh, uh, you know, uh, participation. Now, beside that, uh, once you participate, please uh, read some of the your colleagues' um, feedbacks and give your feedbacks on it. Any comments, you can, you know, choose any comment and give your feedbacks on it, such as you make a comment on that. That's one thing. So we will do this every week. It's a part of the class participation. Now, the second thing that I wanted to discuss with you is um, um, I'm going to send an email for every five to six people. And these people will be, these students will be five or six. They will be in one group. And they will be first week, or this week I'm going to send it to them. And these five or six people uh, exchange the uh, the contacts of each other. Like, you know, use them, for example, you can use WhatsApp or chatting or hang. Uh, these any tools that you can communicate communicate with each other, the five group, five people or six people, and they will be um, <clears throat> probably until end of the semester they will be together. And I will send the week after, not this week, the week after, the group assignment. And I'm looking forward for you guys to cooperate with each other and come up with one answer so <clears throat> i believe that you know the group uh, made of people who some of them are really good in writing some of them are really good in research some of them are really good in the presentation so you don't need to be equal in everything you can only divide the job between the groups and have somebody who does the research, have somebody who does the writing, and have somebody who do the presentation. So between all of you guys can be perfect with each other. And the reason that I emphasize on a group work is because the fact that, you know, you cannot, uh, outside the world, the real world, you're always gonna work in a group, different group. So you need to get used to it now, uh, working with a group and utilizing these tools. So I look forward to send you an email um, that uh, every five people or six people become one group. And note, when you send me your as group assignment, then you will be uh, sending to me and CC your team. So you wanna make sure that your team is always aware uh, aware of what you're sending to me as a, on behalf of the group, and also would have the names, the ID number, and the information that can guide me to which class you're in and which sector. Okay, so I will send you the, the email, and the email will be, you know, uh, for the people who in each one group. And that's uh, hopefully I can do it this week. Now, without further ado, we will, uh, we will do um, chapter four today, and bear with me here. And basically, in chapter four, there is not much to understand other than there is uh, things to, you know, have a, a good idea about it and uh, some memorization, but there is not much memorization. I don't request in my courses to memorize things. I want you to understand. Now, the situation like this, most of the American laws is similar. There are similar laws in Canada and more when it comes to the 
um, uh, human rights and uh, you know the legal context of employment. So we will move back and forth between these uh, two countries as a legal the legal context of employment decision. Note there is more in Canada, as we said, than in, in USA, but these are information that you need to know when you are working for the HR department or you're dealing with the HR department, what they are really uh, all about. There are some laws, rules, and constraints that they have to go through with them. Now here, the question in this chapter will help the managers to answer how are the employment practice affected by the civil rights laws and the Supreme Court interpretation of those laws? Um, what should be the component of an effective policies to prevent sexual harassment? What obligations does the Family and Medical Leave Act impose on employers? What rights does it grant to employees? When a company is in a process of downsizing, what strategy can it use to avoid um, the complaints of age discrimination? And what should a senior management do to ensure the jobs applicants or the employees with disability receive a reasonable accommodations? Now, <clears throat> let's define the discrimination. Discrimination is a giving of any unfair, un unfair advantage or disadvantage to the members of a particular group in comparison with members of other groups. Disadvantage results in a denial or restriction of employment, for example, or a, a, a opportunity or inequality in terms of benefits uh, of employment. So any inequalities in um, denial or restriction of employment opportunities, or there is inequalities in the terms or benefits of employment. Equal employment opportunity, or they call it EEO, the non-discriminatory employment practice that ensure, well, first, the evaluation of candidate for a job only in terms of job-related criteria, such as selection, performance, appraisal. They all have to be within the job criteria, not with a race or look or something away from the job criteria. And has to be fair and equal treatment of employees in the uh, in the on the job. So major forms of illegal discrimination is comes from illegal discrimination. We have two types. We have one unequal treatment when you're treating people unequally, and there is the adverse impact. The intentional discrimination, which says for the different standards for the different groups. So you have a different standard for a different group, that's intentional discrimination. And also when you do a retaliation, it also includes retaliation. There is unintentional discrimination where you have same standards, different consequences for the different group. So the result and consequences, you give same standards of things, but the consequences is you differentiate between them. Uh, the result here is you're doing um, different standard for uh, different people. So sub theories of discrimination within the dis disparate treatment theories, we have something called the evidence or the direct evidence, which is an open expression of hatred, disrespect, and quality is knowing direct against members of a particular group, revealing pure bias. Regard of, you know, race, religions, or all these things, if you show it. The second thing is what you call the circumstantial evidence, 
which is the statistical evidence is used as a method of provoking the intention to discriminate systematically against the class of substantial circumstantial is like a statistic shows that you know certain race is taller than other race certain race is faster than other race certain race is smarter than other race these are all unacceptable in uh, you know as a statistical evidence and then we have what you call a mixed motive uh, case which is relies on the both direct evidence uh, of the intention to discriminate on the same impressionable basis and proof of the employer's stated legitimate base. So, um, and it's also used for its employment decision is actually just as a pretext for illegal discrimination. So you use these in order for you to discriminate against other people, not to hire them, not to recruit them. Now there is a legal context uh, of a human resource decision. There is what you call amendment act, uh, titles, all these activities, which is available in the state and there is similar of them in, in Canada. But in the state, for example, you have the 13th uh, and 14th amendment to the constitution. You have the Civil Rights Act, you have the Equal Pay Act, you have the Title VII of Civil Rights Act, you have the Civil Rights Act and the Aid Discrimination Employment Act. Now, um, more you, we have uh, what you call the Immigration Reform and Control Act, the Disability Act and the Family and Medical Leave Act, and there is a uniform Service Employment and Reemployment uh, Right Act. These are all comes from the constitutions of USA or Canada, and these are applicable to the workforce, to the work in, in, in Canada and the States. Now, when you talk about the Civil Rights Act, it grant all citizens the right to make and enforce the contracts for employment provide the federal remedies against the racial discrimination uh, in a private employment. So there is no uh, racial discrimination. And also allow for juries, for example, trial and compensate it for penalty uh, damages for the victim of intentional racial or ethnic discrimination. So uh, they are all enforceable and they are the civil rights to make sure that, that there is no bias when you're recruiting somebody. And usually it covers both large and small employers, even those with the fewer than 15 employers. So you have the legal and the rights uh, acts, uh, civil rights acts uh, backing you to implement the, the unbiased process of recruiting and promoting. Furthermore, the Civil Rights Act grant all the citizens the right to sue in a federal court if they feel they've been deprived of any rights or privileges guaranteed by the law. Applies only to operate within the jurisdiction and does not extend the discriminatory conduct uh, occurring outside. So they do. Uh, within the jurisdiction, within, for example, Ontario, within Canada, but they don't go internationally in these civil rights acts. There is something called uh, the Equal Pay Act, uh, which is required the man and woman working for the same establishment be paid the same rate of pay for work that is substantially equal in skills, effort, responsibility and working condition. It's pay differential or legal and appropriate if they are based on say seniorities, if somebody more senior or has more merits, system that measure quality or quantity of work or any other factor other than sex. So other than being male or female, other things that you can measure. 
In equity correction me me measures is employers must raise the rate of the lower paid employees, not and not lower the rate of the higher paid. So if you have discrimination based on sex and and there is the male getting paid more and the ladies getting less, they should not lower the male's rate. They have to raise the female rates. The Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act uh, prohibit the discrimination on the base of race, colors, religion, sex, or national origin in all aspects of employment. It also helped create the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission or EEOC to ensure that employers, employment agencies, and labor organizations comply with the Title VII. So there is a, you know, a commission who is in charge of to make sure this Act Title VII is uh, applicable. And there is a payback or back pay award for Title cases are limited two years after you have to filing of charges. So when you uh, file today a charging against discrimination, you will get paid two years uh, prior to it for the maximum of two years prior to the filing of the charges uh, of the discrimination. Expand into and include almost all public and employers with 15 or more employers, except the private clubs, uh, religious organization, and a place of employment connected with, here they call it Indian Reservation in the USA. Unfortunately, we call it Aboriginals. So, uh, and the Aboriginal, they don't get involved in the Aboriginals reservation or religions, religious organization or private clubs, whatever the clubs are about. Bonafidia Occupation Qualification or BFOQ uh, and senior systems, they don't get it involved in it. Pre-employment quality inquiries. Um, there is exemption in testing and preferential treatment and national securities. So what's the prima facie, uh, prima facie? Body of fact presumed to be true until provided otherwise. So must be established first. If someone decides to bring a suit until under the title, title seven, presented when the adverse impact is shown to exist. If an individual alleges that a particular employment practice had an adverse impact on all the member of the class or he or she represent. So if the employer effect has some kind of a negative impact on certain race or female or male or him being a representative of it. So it has to present this case. And it presented either through direct evidence of the intention to discriminate or by circumstantial evidence. So it, it will, for example, shows that this person is, whether he's doing things directly, intentionally, or providing the environment where the other will fail in it. The second thing, the legal uh, standard for circumstantial evidence is a four-part test where in a plaintiff must be able to demonstrate that. So the plaintiff has to demonstrate that in a way that she or he belongs to a protected class, such as a racial minority, or a qualified individual with disability. So you cannot say I've been treated bad and you are not belong for the black minorities or the 
Asian minorities and they've been treating, you know, you have to be part of that racial minority. And she or he was somehow harmed or became disadvantages in that situation. She or he was qualified to do the job or to perform the job in a satisfactory manner. And she or he treated less favorably than other outside the protected class. They are have to, the plaintiff have to demonstrate these. Somehow is difficult, but there is people who keep tracks and record, they can present such thing. Once the court accept the prima facie evidence, then the burden of producing evidence shift back and forth from the plaintiff to the defendant to the defendant. So is uh, the plaintiff should be presenting with his evidence or her evidence and the employer should defend that and shift back and forth. So the civil rights acts or the key provisions of civil rights acts is basically uh, monetary damage and uh, injury trials, and, and monetary damage and jury trials usually, adverse impact or unintentional discrimination case and cases, protection from foreign countries, uh, racial harassment, uh, challenges to contest the decrees, mixed motive cases, seniority systems, these are all a key provisions. Race norming within the group, percentile scoring in the employment related tasks. These are all key provisions for a civil rights act. Now there is what we call a, an age discrimination in employment act, which is ADEA. It's prohibited the discrimination in pay, benefit, or continued employment for employees age 40 and over, unless an employer can demonstrate that the age is BFOQ for the job in questions. The key objective here is to prevent the financial troubled com uh, companies from singling out older employees where there are cutbacks. So the goal is really to make sure that the, the employer says, uh, I need to have people less than 40 years to perform certain jobs. And uh, it is the key objective here. Sometimes the company have financial troubles and start cutting down on the employees and they go and cut back on the older ones, which is they want to stop this thing. Older worker can waive their right to sue under this law. So the older people, even if they let go, they can not to sue them, that they shouldn't be able. Under the Older Workers Benefit Protection Act, an individual employee who does not have a pending claim has a 21 days considered such a waiver or 45 days if terminated during a group reduction to force, or if leaving voluntary through a group incentive programs. So, you know, if he has a 21 days to consider such a waiver, and he has a, uh, or 45 days if terminated during a group reductions. Has a seven days after signing to revoke the waiver. So after uh, you know has a 21 days, you know to consider such a waiver. He has seven days after that to revoke the waiver and move on with a dis dis uh, age discrimination act. And so, Immigration Reform and Control Act or IRCA. Future employers may not hire or continue to employ persons who are not legally authorized to work. Employer must verify the, the identity um, of a work authorization of every employee, every new employee. Employer within four to 14 
employees may not discriminate uh, on the basis of the citizen or national uh, origin. So employer with a four to 14 employees may not discriminate on the basis of citizen. Now, provides for a criminal sanction for employer. Oh, one more thing, this four to 14 is not applicable in Canada. I think uh, uh, it's open for everybody. Uh, still, they cannot discriminate on the basis of citizenship or national origin. They provide for a criminal sanction for employer who engage in a pattern or a practice of violations. So there is a sanction from the government uh, who really, you know, uh, perform this immigration reform and control and works against them and hire, for example, aliens, illegal aliens. An executive order, for example, order of prohibit companies that knowingly hire a legal worker from receiving federal contract. That's one of the things that if you're hiring illegal or uh, illegal aliens or a legal worker, you will not get any federal contracts. Now we have what do you call uh, Americans with disability, Canadian with disabilities, the same is like ADA, uh, ADA or uh, Act. And the title of one of ADA applies to all employers within the 15 or more employees. Protects the people with a disability from discrimination in the employment, transportation and public accommodation. Now here, if you go any restaurant or any places, uh, pu public and or private, there is access for uh, disabled people. Uh, buses should have the access to the disabled and public accommodation. And also prohibit an employer from discriminating against a qualified individual with disabilities. So if somebody has a, some kind of disability that's not affecting the work or delivering the work or performing the work, he should not uh, prohibit that. Qualified individual has the ability to perform the essential function of a job with or without accommodation. There's a uh, protect, rehabilitate drugs or alcohol abusers alcoholics, um, and people who have tested positive with HIV or AIDS also. The Disability Act continue with the disability means the physical or mental impairment that substantially limit one or more major life activities, whatever it is, maybe cannot speak, cannot see, cannot hear, cannot walk, one of the uh, impediments. And ADA, or American with Disabilities, or Canadian with Disabilities Amendment Act in 2000 broadened the definition of the disabilities and include the cancer, diabetes, major spread depression, and epilepsy along the side, the long recognized impediment. So all these would be part of the disabilities. ADA, Implication for employer. Any factory, office, retail store, bank, hotel, or other building open to a public will have to be made accessible to those with a physical disability. We said that in the earlier slide. Um, Employers must take measurable account accommodations for a major for job applicants or employee with the disabilities. A pre-employment physical are permissible only if all employees are subject to them and they cannot be given until after a condition offer of employment is made. So uh the pre-employment physicals are it's, it's acceptable, but cannot be uh, given after all the condition offered 
of the employment is made. Um, the medical information on employee must be kept separate from the other personal or work-related information about them. Employers can prohibit the use of alcohol, illegal drugs at workplace, and continue to give alcohol and drug tests. So employer can do that at work. And the supervisor, the HR professional, and anyone else who supervise uh, employees, interview candidate, and makes hiring decisions should be trained on that. Now, there is one more, there is an act called Family and Medical Leave Act. Gives a worker up to 12 weeks unpaid leave each year. For a birth, adoption, or a foster care of a child within a year of the child arrival. So you get a 12 weeks off. To care for the spouse, parents, or a child with a serious health condition. That's another way of getting the 12 days or uh, 12 weeks off. And for the employees whose serious health condition, if it prevents him from her or working something, breaks his legs, he cannot work anymore, or for 12 weeks, he can get 12 weeks off. It covers all the private sector within 50 or more employees. So you need to know how many employees and which act is applicable. Employers can choose exempt key salaries employee who are an, among their highest paid 10% from the Family and Medical Act. So the highest paid, um, they might be exempted from that, giving them 12 weeks off and all this because it costs more to get these people off. Employers must maintain a health insurance benefit for those who avail FMLA and give the workers their previous job or comparable position when they return. So if she goes on maternity leaves after 12 weeks come back, she should get her job or better uh, ground. And also enforcement pr provision are discriminated by the Department of the Labor. So there is an enforcement for that. Somebody, Department of the Labor enforced that. Now the amendment and expanding, including this military families. So also business are required to offer up to 26 weeks of unpaid leave to employee, employees who provide care to wounded military personnel, that's in the States, and employers must provide the 12 weeks of FMLA leave to immediate family members of soldiers, reservists, or members of National Guard who have a qualified existence. Now, um, Uniformed Service Employment and Reemployment Right Act. As I said, these are all information that you need to understand when you start working, whether you are in an HR department or you're dealing with HR, what's your right when you're working. It requires the public and private employers to promptly deploy individual returning from uniformed service in the position that they would uh, have occupied and with their seniority right, they would have enjoyed have they never left. It means if he goes to a war or a military fight or something and comes back, he should get his position or a better position, seniority right, because just like he never left his work. Uh, requires employer to maintain health benefit for the employees while they are away but they are not required to make up the significant difference between military and civilian pay. So if the military pays more, they're not required to pay as military pays. And administered by veteran employers, employment and training services in the Department of Labor, that's in the for USA. Equal Employment Opportunity Commissions or EEOC. 
it set up the policies and in individual cases determine whether there is a reasonable cause to believe that a law unlawful discrimination has occurred. So it's a kind of in some ways cases becomes like a judgment uh, in a judgment position. As usually follow the three step process, which is investigation, conciliation, and litigations. Once it's received a complaint from this commission, so somebody is complaining, they do this C process and then might be taken into the court or they will judge it. As also has issued several guidelines to the title. Title Seven compliance, which is EEOC issued that uh, several guidelines. It requires organization within a hundred or more employees to file an annual report detailing the number of the employees by job categories, ethnicities, race, gender, which is used to identify if there is a pattern or somehow the systematic discrimination is happening. Now, um, there is, when you're working in a, uh, your own a factory or your own a business, sometimes you are applying for a uh, government contract. So the government contracts has some kind of a compliance they need to uh, uh, take care of it. Uh, the contracts and the subcontracts in EEO and affirmative action requires, in addition to quali quality, timeliness, and, and other requirements of federal contract work. In other words, if the contractor and subcontractor with more than $50,000 as an estate in government business and with 50 or more employees must prepare and implement written affirmative action plan. So part of getting qualified is has to implement a written affirmative action plan. Employers must establish the goal and timetable to hire for hiring and promotion in job where women and minorities underrepresented in the workforce relative to their uh, availability in the labor force. So one is asking all these laws, why there is self-discrimination? See, all these rules have loopholes and there is a ways of doing it, which is a, through a loopholes which is the government keep closing these loopholes, but unfortunately they keep, uh, you know, uh, finding another loopholes. So back to it, the distinction between the rigid quotas and the goal on timetables. When they're enforcing something, they give them something they need to, you need to implement. There is two ways. One way is when he starts and must be met in a specific amount uh, specified amount of time within one year, one month, three months, five years, something like that. And the second one at the start done with a reasonable time window. So within five to six years, five to 10 years, you might be doing such a, uh, implementation for it. Now the Office of Contract Compliance Program or FCCP when a compliance review of the or by the OFCCP indicates a problem that cannot be resolved easily, it, resi it tries to reach a conciliation agreement with employer, try to find another way of solving the problem. If the agreement is unsuccessful and they don't want to you know, solve the problem, then the formal informant action is necessary. So if the employer does not comply, there is a formal action necessary. A contractor may lose their government contract. The government may withhold their payment, for example, or may 
or they may be diverted from any government contract in the future. There is no more contract for them. Now, areas that make up uh, the main body of employment case law. These are the cases always you find. Um, you find unfair discrimination by sex, race, age, religion, or national origin. So if you're dealing with a child or you're in a child, you need to be aware of these cases and don't get yourself involved in it. You want to make sure you uh, comply with these rules. The other thing is the seniorities, um, testing and interviewing, personal uh, history information and preferential selection. These are always the case laws. Now, uh, sex discrimination. The Supreme Court has ruled that the traditional sex segregated jobs or qualified women can be promoted only marginally, better qualified uh, men to promote more balanced uh, representation. So if there is a man is a little bit more qualified, they can hire the woman in that way. Stress the need for affirmative action plan to be flexible, gradual, and limited in their effect and whites and men. Express the disapproval of a strict numerical quota except where necessary or temporary basis to remedy serve, serve past discrimination. So if you are hiring uh, people just because uh, you need to meet the quota, the uh, government would not accept that. And if you're doing it for just temporary, it's fine for fixed remedies, but you need to watch for that. So the sex discrimination uh, cases have been argued under both theories of unlawful discrimination and desperate treatment on adverse impact. Many cases involve an allegation of gender stereotyping, usually. We have another guide, which is for the pregnancy, which is EOS, EO, EEOC's Guidelines for the Pre Pregnancy Discrimination Act, which is written or unwritten employment practice, policies or practice which in, exclude from employment application or employees because of pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical condition in a, is in a prima facie violation of Title VII. Excuse me. Employer is not required to give a pregnant employees a special treatment which is, that makes it interesting, but same time, he cannot discriminate against it. The Pregnant Worker Fairness Act requires employers to make reasonable accommodation to no limitation for pregnant applicant or employees. So as long as those do not cause an under, undue hardship for the employee. So if he can give him give the, the the pregnant woman some cutting slack or you know uh, support as long as it does not cause hardship for the employee or affect his business. The sexual harassment, unwelcome sexual advance request for sexual favor, and other verbal and physical conduct of sexual nature. You need to be, when you're working in Canada, you need to be very careful of your gestures, talking, hands, body movement. These are, can all be a part of the sexual harassment. Submission to or rejection of this conduct explicitly or implicitly act, affect an individual employment unreasonably interferes with an individual work performance, for example, or create an intimidating, 
hostile or offensive work environment. The types is quid pro quo harassment exists when the harassment is a condition of employment. And there is a hostile environment harassment, a verbal or physical conduct that create an intimidating, hostile or offensive work environment or interferes with an employee's job performance. The sexual harassment features of an effective policies. When you're working, you will get, uh, start working, you get all these information with the training, official training, especially if it's a mid-sized to large size company, they will give you all these training. The statement from the chief executive officer that states firmly that sexual harassment will not be tolerated. This is one of the feature of an effective policies. So there should be a statement. Workable definition of sexual har harassment. Uh, effective complaint procedure that include multiple ways to file complaints. Clear statement of multiple ways means that you can file to your boss or to the HR or through a mail. There's different procedures. So we have the freedom of how to file it just in case of somebody blocking that. Clear statement of sanction for violators and protection for those who makes charges. Promote confidential investigation for every claim of harassment. Preservation of all investigative information regular training of all managers and supervisors and follow up determine if harassment has stopped. So it's a quite sensitive case that you need to be fully aware of it before you start working uh, within the HR or in a company uh, that deals with uh, uh, these cases. She or he is within the protected age group so the requirement to prove age discrimination, she or he, this is a different subject, should be 40 years and older. She or he is doing satisfactory work, no complaint. She was a discharge despite the satisfactory work performance. And position was filled by a person younger than this person replaced. That's a requirement for prove age discrimination. The seniority system is establish business practice that allots employment rights and benefit to employees as their relative length of retained employment increase. So the more they more they work, they should be promoted also. Employer work hard to hire and promote members of protected groups. If layoffs becomes necessary, those individual may, may be lost because of their low seniorities. So you cannot, uh, you know, the senior people will be more protective when it comes to such, such work. So if you're hiring people or laying off people, should be the low seniorities one. The voluntary mod uh, modification of seniority policy for affirmative action proposes remain proper. In a collective bargaining, the union must be a party to any decree that modify a bona fide uh, seniority system. It is, you have to, when you're working or in HR or working with, in a company, you need to know whether there is a union and get to know the head of the group or union group and get to know what kind of protection you have, what kind of a right you have and what kind of things that you have to do on behalf of the union. Because usually union deduct something of your paycheck for them in order to perform these activities. Now, when it comes to the testing and interviewing, the tile sanction Style seven sanctions, the use of professionally developed ability test 
What does that mean? Uh, general principle, the law prohibits not only open and deliberate discrimination, but also practice that are fair in a form, but discriminatory in operations. Employer bears the burden of proof that any requirement for an employee is related to the job performance. So they should not put a test that makes the, the uh, different group fails because of that. It is necessary for the plaintiff to prove that the discrimination was intentional and the job related test and other employment selection procedures are legal and useful. You want to make sure, be sure that there is a legitimate job related reason for every question raised in an employment or promotional interviews. So you cannot ask questions that's not job related. And you need to limit your questions to need to know rather than nice to know information. Monitor interview outcome for adverse impact validate the selection methods. Now, personal history. If personal background information has the effect of denying or restricting equal employment opportunity, it may violate Title Seven. Is like the criminal record, uh, some kind of uh, record that affect your employment. Uh, natural practice that's uh, being struck down by the courts based on non-job relevance. So mostly it's going to be on based on the non-job relevant uh, recruitment practice based on a present employment re referrals. And so they hiring people based on the referrals, height and weight for the requirement for, for example, arrest and conviction records. These are all natural practice that has been struck down by the court based on non-job relevance. Uh, personal history items are not uh, unlawfully discriminatory. So could be lawfully discriminatory but one must show that they are relevant to the job, like if he's working in a security or sensitive job in order to use their, uh, these histories. The reverse discrimination, discrimination against white in the favor of members of protected group. Now, um, there might be some reverse where you are not hiring a white people because you are going to you know, just hiring the protected group. The court ruling permits public and private university, they not, uh, the court ruling permit the public and private university to use the race as a plus factor in evaluating potential students. So in, 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 in university, they might use the race to evaluate the students as a plus factor, not as a basic one provided they take the sufficient care of to evaluate individually each applicant. So they, or they look at all the applicant, and if, for example, visible minority has uh, 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 similarities in everything, they would choose a, a visible minority. So the rationale for considering race was not to compensate for the past discrimination but to obtain educational benefit from a diverse student. So it's not because they did not accept the, the old in old days. The, the, it's not for that reason. They didn't accept the, you know, uh, black, Chinese, or any other uh, uh, Arabs. Uh, it's not that. It's just to make sure they go to the right diverse, the right ways, sorry. So the key terms, as we said, this chapter is about understanding, nothing really uh, memorizing, nothing there is just more illegal terms. When you are working in a chart, you have to know them. 
or you work in a company, you have to know what's your right, what's the other people's right, what's the, the employer right. So you need to know this stuff in the HR and in, in working environment in Canada. The key term that you need to know, the equal opportunity or equal employment opportunity, you need to know the discrimination, unequal treatment, the direct uh, evidence, what is circumstantial evidence, the mixed motive cases, we explained that, the adverse impact of discrimination, the affirmative action, uh, uh, prima facie case, bona fide occupational qualification, the disabilities, the systematic discrimination, and the contract compliance. Uh, case laws, mostly were sexual harassment. Where is the most of the cases of laws? Um, the quid pro quo harassment, the hostile environment harassment. You need to understand the seniority system, people over the age 40 years old, whether you're going to be discriminated. And the final is the reverse discrimination. You take it into consideration. So this is end of the chapter four. And I hope you go over it and over it, try to understand what it's meant here. And um, I'll see you in uh, next class. Meanwhile, hopefully this week, I would be able to send you your group names. Thank you very much. And uh, have a nice day.